Thankful. I'm thankful for the speed. I'm thankful for the gift, but I mean, I feel like we all have a special gift, you know? That's how I look at it. That was track and field Olympian Tori Bowie in 2016, just one month before the games in Rio. Her gift that she was talking about, the speed she was talking about, not something many of us possess. Tori Bowie would go on to help the U.S. women's team win gold as the anchor in the sprint relay and silver in the 100-meter dash and bronze in the 200-meter dash in Rio that year. The following year, the 2017 World Championships in London, Bowie won gold in the women's 100-meter race, leaning in to, finish, to the finish line to clinch the victory. That win earned Bowie the title of world's fastest woman. Sadly, we will never get to see Tori Bowie's gift in action again. Last month, she was found dead in her home in Florida after deputies went to conduct a well-being check on her. Last week, we learned from an autopsy that Bowie, who was eight months pregnant, was in labor when she died. The cause was possible complications of respiratory distress and eclampsia. Eclampsia is the onset of seizures or a coma brought on by preeclampsia, a high blood pressure disorder that can develop during pregnancy. The complication is rare. The CDC estimates that it occurs in about 5 to 7 percent of pregnancies, but the rate of preeclampsia in black women is 60 percent higher than it is in white women. In fact, during a pregnancy in 2018, Bowie's teammate at the Rio Olympics, Allison Felix, also developed preeclampsia. These stories of deadly pregnancy complications are all too common for black women. The CDC also found that black women are three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes than are white women. This disparity even holds when researchers take into account underlying social and economic factors like education and income, which indicates that racism and discrimination actually do play a critical role in all this. One case that this scenario may bring to mind is that of the tennis star Serena Williams, who made headlines when she talked about how she nearly died after giving birth to her daughter. Hospital employees ignored her concerns when she told them she might be experiencing a pulmonary embolism because of her history of blood clots. It was only after she insisted on a CT scan that a blood clot was actually found in her lungs, a pulmonary embolism. That harrowing ordeal raised an important question. If one of the most visible and powerful black women in the world had to fight to get appropriate medical uh, attention during such a vulnerable moment, what might be happening to women whose names and faces are not as well known? So as we approach one year since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, we're seeing more and more stories about how abortion laws are impacting the standard of care for pregnant people amid existing disparities in black maternal health care outcomes. Democratic Congresswoman Lauren Underwood has reintroduced her Momnibus Act to help give mothers more of a fighting chance. The Momnibus is made up of 13 individual bills that address the many factors that drive maternal mortality and disparity. Some of the investments that these bills will make include support for moms who struggle with maternal mental health conditions and substance use disorders, growing and diversifying the pre perinatal workforce so that all moms receive maternal health care and support from people they trust, and promoting innovative payment models to incentivize high-quality maternity care during and after pregnancy. And given the stark realities for women who may suffer pregnancy complications or be forced by law to carry pregnancies to term, this level of support is more vital than ever. 